All right. Thanks for joining us here at America F1. What a great race we had over the weekend. I mean, the Las Vegas Grand Prix strikes again. That's two years in a row. That Vegas delivered, baby. If you're a Hamilton fan, probably for you, the best race of the season was Silverstone. If you're a Max fan, probably the best race for you is definitely Brazil. But if you're just a racing fan, the best race of this year has got to be Vegas. It's got to be. It had everything. It had gorgeous George on pole position from pole to first. No mistakes. It had Super Max Verstappen winning his fourth consecutive world title. Amazing. Max was amazing. He did just what he had to do. It had Lewis Hamilton proving that his shelf life hasn't come to expiration yet. It had Ferrari drama. I mean, Charles with all those F-bombs. I mean, F-bomb after F-bomb and comment after comment. Right after the race, the next day, Cadillac and GM are going to be the 11th team on the grid. That's right. Formula One is going to open up its books and let in a new member of the Formula One family. And that's going to be Cadillac Cadillac, Cadillac style. Let's dive into that and more here at America F1. Yeah, America F1. America F1. It's a golden run. America F1. Now, if you're out there trying to figure out what you can get a friend or a loved one for the holidays, go to the video at YouTube and go to America F1 and check out our Ridge.com discounts. Ridge makes smart walls that are great form and functionality. They're RFID safe and they just make wallets cool again. Check them out because Ridge goes where you go. <laughs> Gotta get one. Now, let's talk about super we're stepping four time world champion finished in fifth that's all he had to do he just had to finish the race and be ahead of Lando Norris he did what he had to do he, he had a dominant car in the beginning of the season Remember the first, like all the way up to Miami. I mean, that car was humming along and nobody could touch him. After Miami, I'm going to say that McLaren had the best car. And they just, you know, they just squandered it. They really looked like they weren't ready for prime time. And Max just, you know, he'd get a win. He didn't get too many wins. He'd get, you know, a third. He'd get a fourth. He, he just kept just getting points, you know. He did what he had to do and... You would think that Lando, even though Lando had a big, big lead uh, to overcome and he couldn't do it. And even he said, he says, like, who, like, I have the biggest deficit of anybody who, who, whoever would come back from that. And I think if history, uh, if I can remember, I think Kimi Raikkonen had a big deficit in 2007 to win his title because Lewis and and Fernando were fighting it out, taking points off of each other, and then Kimmy would slip in, and Kimmy would slip in, and he had a big deficit to overcome. And the question would be to you out there, who could overcome that deficit? Do you think if Lewis Hamilton, Fernando Alonso, Charles Leclerc were in that McLaren, would they have overcome this deficit? Uh, write write it down in the comments. You know, say say what you think. I'd love to. We'd love to hear from you. And you're wondering why, you know, none of our co-hosts are around today. Well, you know, it's the holidays and, you know, people are with their families, but the show must go on. And so that's what we bring here at American F1. The show must go on. We, at this time, I want to make everybody remember to like, subscribe if you're new, hit that bell notification so you can be notified when we have a new show up 
And if you listen to us on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, you know, make sure you subscribe, tell your friends about us, and hit that notification so you can know when we're up and running and you can listen in and comment. And remember, we're always about the fans. So if you want to see us tackle a topic or if you'd like to have somebody on the show, you know, just drop it down and let's see what we can do and we can see if we can provide a another guess for you or we'll answer your comments because we always answer the comments when you put them down there we actually answer them it's not a bot it's not some staff member because the staff is like not that many so we actually answer all of your comments and we thank you for joining us during this holiday season super max i mean what can you say about this guy i mean he's a tough racer he's very smart He says what he says, he means what he says, and he doesn't, what I like about him is he is in his own skin. Like, remember when he didn't move over for Checo? And he said it right over the radio for all of us to hear. I stand by what I said. You guys know what I said. Don't ask me about that again. Now, if Lando had maybe 20 30 percent of that that gumption that fire that super max has maybe he would have gave a better run at this title because let's come on folks let's be honest since miami mclaren they kind of squandered it they weren't ready for prime time i mean they should have first of all there's no way that Lando shouldn't have been closer, should have won way more races than he did. You know, they were worried about giving Oscar's feelings and hey, Oscar, you like you're going to you're going to need Oscar. <laughs> what do you mean he's going to need Oscar? If you're going for an individual championship, what do you, what do you need? The Max has proven it. What do you need the other guy for? You don't need the other guy. As long as you do what you got to do, you can win. You, can, you don't need the other guy to win the individual championship. You only need the other guy to win the constructors championship and now it looks like that mclaren might even squander that because ferrari's in pretty good form finishing third and fourth in this race and i think coming up into qatar they might be the perennial favorite for one of them finishing first in that race so mclaren if mclaren doesn't win the constructors title this year they have nobody to blame but themselves nobody and i mean nobody now when it comes to supermax with these four titles look at that max is the best man i i really appreciate max you know wasn't the biggest max fan and everybody probably knows that but i really came to his side not because of his racing per se because he is a good racer and i think you know To me, he's not the cleanest of racers, doesn't make the cleanest of passes. You know, it's just, you know, I'm here, you move out of the way or we'll crash and he doesn't care, which, you know, you got to like that gumption. But what I like about Max is he speaks his mind. He's not a robot like a lot of these guys, like always saying the right things, like not giving good comments, like scared to talk back to his team. Like he knows who he is. He's like, I'm going to say what I'm going to say because I know the power that a four-time world champion and at that time three-time world champion i know the power that i have and I know the gravity that i have here so i'm the one making this car go look at my teammate look at checo he can't even beat my guy yuki in qualifying he, he can't and the only reason he's still in that car and we all i know there's a lot of checo fans out there and i like checo too come on i like checo but the only reason he's still in that car is the sponsorships he's bringing. That's it. And that's why Christian Horner was like, eh, you know, when they were head of constructors, like, yeah, you know, we'll talk to Carlos Slim. We'll get some more money from him. And, you know, if we don't win the constructors, it's OK, because we still have that money. But what Helmut Marco said is that the employees won't be getting a Christmas bonus because they're not first in the constructors now that kind of has to sting because if you're getting more money from checo sponsors then that money should trickle down to all the hard work all the people in the garages all the people doing the little everyday things at red bull they should get a chunk of that money and why because it replaces the money that they would have got if you would have replaced checo earlier 
and put somebody else in that car. Because even though Daniel Carl's like gone and retired, he would probably have done better than Checo. I know, I know for a fact Yuki would do better. And I know they don't want Yuki in the car. And I'm not going to say it's racism or what, or like they think like Yuki uh, says the wrong thing. I just, I just think they don't like Yuki. I don't know why. I mean, I kind of do know why, but it's not for me to say because, you know, everybody has to come to their own grips on why they think Yuki doesn't deserve a seat in the the main team. I think he does. He's, he's proven it. Just like he said, he said it just a couple days ago. Everybody they throw in this car, I'm destroying and I'm going to continue to do that. And you saw that over this weekend in Vegas. I mean, you, Yuki's in the points again. Yuki's way ahead of Lawson in qualifying, way ahead of Lawson in the race. Yuki's a good racer, man. You stop it. Stop it with the Yuki hate. Okay? Anyway, back to Supermax. <laughs> what else can you say about this guy? <laughs> what else can you say? Is he going to win five titles in a row? I don't think so. I think next year, you know, hopefully it's going to be Ferrari really in this mix. You know, McLaren, I can't see... Uh, Lando winning a title like not, I just don't think he just has it in him yet. Maybe it will come, but it doesn't seem to have the fire that these other guys have. Maybe he does, but he's kind of self-deprecating a lot. But the thing I really wanted to get down to when I really get into the Max Lando conundrum, it's the friendship stuff, man. I'm going to come out and say it. You can't be like you. If you ever watch when they have all the guys, all the drivers and they go on that lap, that hot lap and then the back of that big truck and they're all buddy, buddy, they're all talking around. Have you ever noticed that Fernando and Lewis kind of stand off to them to themselves? They don't really engage. They're in the zone, man. It's like the old NBA used to be or old rivalries used to be. You don't make friends with your rivals. You're not trying to be their best friend. You're not trying to hang out with them during the season. Even in an off season, I don't think, you know, George and, and Lewis aren't hanging out. You know, Lewis hung out with uh, Valtteri because he said Valtteri was just cool, man. There were some no games. All these other guys play games. I don't, want, I don't want to play games with them. So if they're playing games, I don't hang out with them. But Valtteri was just a true, genuine person. So that's why he's Lewis's favorite teammates. He said, there's no games. No games. So when you look at who Lewis is hanging out with, he's not hanging out with George Russell. That's his competition. Yeah, they're friendly. They talk. But in the off season, you think they're going skiing together? You think they're going swimming together? You think they're taking vacations together? He actually took vacations with Valtteri. You think he's doing that? And that's where Lando, he hangs out with Max. They're friends. They hang out. You don't think Max plays head games with him? during the off season, like, man, I really beat the hell out of you. Like, can you beat me in anything? They're probably, you know, they're probably playing tennis or they're probably playing pickleball and Max is beating him in that too. And he's just <laughs> laughing at him. Like, can you beat me in anything? And eventually let be honest. If you got a best friend and he beats you in everything, not even a best friend, just a friend. And he beats you in everything. Eventually you're going, damn, man, I can't beat. It gets into your psyche. It gets into your head. And eventually you're going, man, I can't beat this guy in anything. I mean, hell, we we're playing hopscotch. I couldn't even beat this guy in hopscotch. So it sinks into the racing, man. Max is all, he lives rent free in Lando's head. Matter of fact, Lando live, uh, Max lives rent free in Lando's head. I think Charles Leclerc lives rent free in Lando's head. I definitely know Lewis Hamilton lives rent free in uh, Lando's head and a lot of your um, racing fans and a lot of the pundits and a lot of people's fans. <laughs> like Lewis says, if it's a, snow, a slow news day, they always uh, talk about me. Now, let's talk about the winner of this race. I'm wondering enough about Max. Max is Max. He's the best right now. There's just, come on. I love Lewis. Lewis is great. I like Lewis. I like, I like Charles. I like a lot of these guys, but Lando and Max is just right now. He's just better. He's just better. That's it. He's young. He's in his prime and he's ferocious, man. And he just, he just brings it and he brings that intensity. That's what I love. I love it. But gorgeous George, there he is. And gorgeous George 
I mean, he really showed it. He was great in qualifying. He showed Lando how <laughs> he showed Lando how when you're on the pole position, how you go from pole to the win. Didn't put a foot wrong on that car. Not one foot. He, there was no mistakes. He managed the tires. He managed the lead. There was no doubt that he was going to win that race. And hats off to George. And, you know, I, I, I call him Woody, right? And I've called him Woody for a long time. And I think I'm going to get rid of that moniker. And I'm going to call him Gorgeous George from now. And the reason why I'm going to call him Gorgeous George is because if you ever really, like, look, like, when you... Look at George when he's giving like interviews, he'll have this little smirk and he'll turn his head to the side like he's a model or something like that. You know, like he like he like he thinks the cameras are like ching 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 ching. Like I'm gonna be on the cover of GQ, you know. So and if you even dig uh dive it deep a little bit down the wormhole a little bit even more, he's starting to dress pretty well when he comes to these races, man. He's not wearing just the before, you know, he'd just be bring coming in with the Mercedes gear and you're like, oh, <laughs> like everybody else. But now he's coming in like dressed like kind of like Lewis or you're like, oh, what's he wearing? You know, OK, guys get kind of stylish, you know. All right. So gorgeous George. Winning his third Grand Prix. I think George next year as the leader of the Mercedes Benz. F1 team is going to have some learning to do. And why do I say that is because I think he's a good driver. I don't think he's great yet. And the reason why I say I don't think he's great yet is because all the testing that's been going on, like remember their first year, like two years ago, and all the different setups this year, it's all been pretty much carried by Lewis. Like Lewis's car is doing all the heavy lifting. Lewis is doing all the heavy, heavy lifting. He's doing all the testing. He's doing all the feedback, blah, blah, blah. So, but if George is the leader, then he should have just said, Hey, enough of this with Lewis doing all this stuff. Let me take charge. Let me give most of the feedback. Lewis, you, you just drive, you know, the spa setup. I'll take all the new bits and see how they work. And I'll give all the feedback. And then if you go back in the season, when they asked Lewis, Hamilton the question like do you think George is going to be a good leader uh, for the team next year there was a long pause and then he said oh we'll just have to see now if now behind the scenes when they're in the debrief room and they're talking about the post race if George was such a great leader and George had such great feedback then Lewis wouldn't have taken that long pause I don't think it's head games because like Lewis said, they're not in a championship fight right now. So he doesn't care. He's like, what do I care if I finish fifth or sixth or seventh? It doesn't matter. I'm just trying to bring as much points to the team as I can. And I'm not in a championship fight. So to me, you know, seven time world champion, uh, that, that, uh, you know, water, like, you know, get, get off my shoulders, get off my shoulders, get off my shoulders. So gorgeous George. Might have a little little trouble next year if Kimmy comes in and Kimmy's quick and, you know, he's been he, he's been given more testing than a lot of these other guys coming into Formula One. So he's going to be ready from day one and it's going to be an interesting year next year. I, I really think it's going to be one of the all time great seasons and I can't wait because there's so many storylines and so many cars in contention next year and this year was a great year and it also shows us that George he even said it you know he can't if he he thinks that if he had Lando's car he would have gave Max more run for his money he said it and a lot of the other drivers are alluding to that Carl Sainz said it I think in the post uh, interview when they're in the cool, de- not the cool down room, when in an interview room for, you know, first, second, and third, the post race uh, interviews. Carl Sainz, he said, Hey, look at this year. Like before, a hey, Max, you know, he had, you know, the first eight or, you know, there's two tenths between all of us. And so at any given time, somebody else can win the race. And he said that 
if we were in Lando's car, we all probably give a better run than he did. Meaning that I don't think in straight race pace, uh, Lando's bad. I think he has good race pace. I just think it's the mental aspect. I just don't think at this point, eh, hey, and I could be wrong. I mean, who, who am I? I'm just some pundit who watches the races, goes to the races and makes an observation, you know, and gets gathers information and makes a discernible, uh, trying to make discernible conversation and discernible os- observations out of it. I do think that mentally, and even how Marco said it, you know, Lando's not as mentally tough as some of these other guys. I think, you know, he's not as mentally tough. And how does he get that? Because, you know, you can see it in other sports. Some guys, they might have the talent. They just don't have that toughness. And they you can't teach it. It's not something you go to, to like some sports psychologist or some sports guru and they teach you how to be tough. Either you have it or you don't. And when you grow up kind of, you know, rich, I mean, Lando's a rich kid. He didn't have to, he doesn't need Formula One. I mean, his dad's a multimillionaire. He's one of the richest guys in Britain. He, he didn't have to do that, you know. When you grow up with everything and everything kind of, I'm not going to say everything's given to you or handed to you, but I'm, I am going to say that there is something to be said about having a scratch and fight and claw, you know, look at Ocon, look at Hamilton, look at uh, even Gasly. You know, these guys didn't grow up like wood, silver spoons in their mouth. They're, they're fighting to get there, man. They're fighting, fighting, fighting. And so... I, I just think it's something that, you know, can't be taught. What was going on with Charles Leclerc? Did you hear his radio? I mean, look, Carlos has been, this is Leclerc's radio. Carlos has been told to not put you under pressure. So just take care of your tires. <laughs> Leclerc says, maybe try it in Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> maybe try it in spanish and if you heard he didn't know that the the radio was still on and i'm pretty sure he's gonna get fined like he must have said f this f that probably eight nine times so i don't know how much you know the, the fines are but that's eight nine f bomb so that's gonna be eight eight nine f bomb fines i guess but what he was alluding to and I kind of don't really understand it because he kind of went through his tires right if you're watching a race in the first end he was up there and he kind of went through his tires and he went through the tires so bad it seemed like when you're watching that he had an engine issue that's how fast those tires fell off and that's how quick people passed him up I mean he went from second to to like fourth in an instant. I mean, boom, boom, boom. And then there was one point where they're asking because he had better pace at one point and they're asking Carlos to you know, switch positions. And But Lewis was right behind Charles. And so Carlos was like, ah, if I give him, if I switch positions now, then maybe Lewis will pass both of us. And I don't want that. Or, or, Charles will pass me and then Lewis will pass me. So he had to be really strategic about that. And when they asked Carlos, Carlos was asking, he didn't want to like actually move over at that point. So he was just saying, hey, bring me in so I could change the tires. And then that way Charles can go and he could be on fresher tires. And they didn't do it on that lap. They did it like a lap later. And then Carlos clearly, and I don't know how he didn't get a penalty. And if you know, if anyone out there knows how he didn't get a penalty other than it being Ferrari, you you have to, you have to put it down in the comments because he clearly was in the pit lane going into the pit lane right before Lewis did. And then he clearly came on the other side of that white line and it's white. It's a big white line and it's supposed to be an instant penalty. Unless um, it's like there's an animal or like a person or something like serious is there, then they won't give you a penalty. But in this case, the, the team said come in and then the team said stay out. He was in the pit lane and he crossed that white line to go out. 
and even Lewis made a comment of it because he did because Lewis was coming in and he did it right in front of him. And he's like, and there's no penalty. No penalty. So here again, this stewarding thing. <laughs> Look, we have to be fair. We have to be consistent. This is not like refereeing soccer. This is not like refereeing football. This is not like refereeing baseball. You can see it. You know, they're not out there live with like the the racers and looking. They're watching a bunch of monitors, man. Okay? They're watching the race and they're watching a bunch of monitors. So they get to see the instant replay like a four referee, but they get to see it live and they get to see all the monitors and they get to look. And then even if they didn't know the rule, they could just look it up right on their phone because they're just sitting there. And the rule states if you come into the pit lane and then you leave the pit lane over that white line, it's a penalty. Formula One, you got to get together with this. You got to have consistent. Judges for the same, same judges, every race. They can't be affiliated with any of these teams. Okay. That's the first thing it has to be. And I I would even say it can't be former racers because those former racers were affiliated with teams. You got to get somebody outside, just like how all these other sports do it. Train them. Hey, I'll volunteer and train them and let them do their job because this is is what corruption looks like and the fans are tired of it okay the fans are tired of it now back to ferrari charles i think he had the red miss you know he just was so upset about this and he really what it all comes down to is he really wants to be second in the driver's championship And he thought that that was a great opportunity for him to get on the podium instead of Carlos, since Carlos is leaving, so he can overtake Lando. Because if he had finished third, Lando finished sixth, there's more points than from fourth to sixth. So I see his point there. Carlos is not moving out of the way, man. The dude is leaving. He don't care. He's out. But... On the other hand, if I was Carlos, I would play it a little bit closer to the vest. You don't want to burn all the Ferrari bridges, man. And the reason why is because in a couple of years when Lewis retires, you might be able to come back to the team because everybody loves you at that team. So don't burn any bridges. Think about it, Carlos. I don't, I'm don't. i pretty sure you're not listening to my show. But if there's any of your friends listening to the show or anybody who knows Carlos, tell this man they love him at Ferrari. Don't burn the bridges. You might be able to come back in a couple of years when Lewis retires. So just do what's right for the team. And hey, if, if, it, if, it, if it takes making Charles happy, make Charles happy, dude. I mean, come on, dude. Think, think about the long term. But on the other hand, now taking the, just throw away everything I just said. On the other hand, he's thinking. Carlos is thinking, this might be my last opportunity to be on a podium in a while. I mean, I'm going to be at Williams for a couple of years. I don't see them making any podiums anytime soon. And if you saw the latest, like there's a report that just came out. It came out today and it was showing how much all the teams are, are making this year. You know, how much in how much money they're making because of the cost cap. Every team is making money except guess what team? Williams, that's right, because Williams is putting so much money into, you know, bringing their team and the factory and everything into the modern era. They've been spending all that money on there. So they're they're in the red. Every other Formula One team is in the green. They're all making money except Williams. Williams is the only team on that list that was in the red. And that's because they got to bring they got to bring everything back up to spec because for so many years they were underfunded. And now that they finally have the money, they have to catch up. They have to spend all their capital, all their money on getting their systems up to snuff, you know. Cadillac is coming. It's coming without the Andretti name. It's going to be Cadillac GM General Motors for some of you people don't know. 
2026. That means two more spots on the grid. I'm hoping Herta from um is you know he's gonna be one of them. I, that's that's the rumor. That's the rumor. And we don't know who the other driver is gonna be. But this is exciting for Formula One. Now we get two more young drivers on the grid, which is awesome. We get another big manufacturer and also Cadillac. You know, G- Cadillac GM. They're gonna in a couple years after they come in, they're gonna offer up engines so there'll be another engine manufacturer so there's another engine that other teams can go out and get so you got ford coming in you got all this american you know might coming in which i love so you know there's going to be another race in america hopefully you know probably chicago because they already bought the name it might be new york but most likely chicago i would even love san francisco to get in the mix and the reason why that because with the golden gate park there's an super opportunity it's wide there's a super opportunity for a street track and out through the golden gate um park and i know you know so people are wrap their mind around it but i'm putting it out into the ether and maybe it'll happen but anyhow ford cadillac gm america america f1 baby let's go now since they're not going to have the Andretti name on there, and I think they're going to be using a lot of the, you know, all the Andretti's been building the factories and everything, and he stepped down, and he's going to be like some, they said he's going to be like a lot of, you know, he's going to come in, and he's going to be like a, a, a director, but an unofficial, you know, just how a lot of was, you know, just with, 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 with Mercedes, and that's what he's supposed to do, that's, that's interesting. I hope he doesn't bring in that that nasty attitude that turns a lot of the people in the paddock off. And that's why he had to, that's why they weren't bringing him in. Because I guess a lot of people just don't like him. I don't know him personally, but that's the word. He's not well liked in the paddock. So, you know, and don't come like, because remember uh, years back, he had said, you know, something about, uh, you know, Lewis Hamilton and he, he was saying how, you know, no one, you know, was racist to Lewis and, you know, don't make comments like that. Cause you don't know what somebody had to go through to get there. You know, don't, don't, don't assume, you know, when you come from a privileged background and you, you know, you're a racing family, it's a racing family, you know, Andretti family in, in America is pretty big and they're good in other motor sports, you know, not F1, but, you know, IndyCar, WC, a lot, a lot of other sports are really renowned and have done a fabulous job and taking nothing away from that. But don't come into F1 with negativity. Just come in being positive, man, say positive things and concentrate on on what you're bringing to the sport concentrate on what you're bringing to the to the fans concentrate on what you're doing for your people in that f1 team and don't come in with a negative attitude don't come in talking about other drivers don't come in talking about other teams that's the only advice i could give to you and let's talk about toto wolf toto what is wrong? I, I just don't. I just can't get. Let, let's see what Toto have to say. What did he have to say? Let's let let's let's show it. Uh, yeah, George's George's driving was just from another planet. He's kept that under control and managed it all the time. I think the defending against the Leclerc was spectacular, and Lewis came from P10 with a with a super strong car, uh, finishing just five seconds behind George. Did you hear what Toto just said? He said. That George's drive was phenomenal. It was extraordinary. I mean, how he held off Leclerc, who never really challenged George, to be honest, if you're watching where it's never really, he was never any, any, it's not like he went ahead of George and then George had to repass him or there was any point where you're like, oh, well, Charles might win this. No, no, there was no point I thought that Charles was going to win that race or even challenge George. George was in a different class, okay? He was. But, Lewis came from 10th to 2nd and 
Toto said it was the car. Did you notice that? He talked about the car instead of Lewis's driving. He talked about the car. Like the car had nothing to do with George's winning. Like it was all on talent. Now you can see it being displayed earlier, not this week, but last week. Toto was on a podcast talking about how Lewis might have a shelf life and how they were thinking about getting another driver anyway and how he didn't want to have that hard discussion with being able to tell a seven time world champion that maybe it was time for him to leave. Man, why did he have to even say that? Why did he even have to say that? You are a leader of a Formula One team. It's not just Lewis Hamilton leaving, going to Ferrari. Remember Nico Hulkenberg, Nico Hulkenberg, the Hulkster. I love Nico Hulkenberg. He's also leaving Haas to go to the Sauber project, right? And we also have Carlos Sainz leaving Ferrari to go to Williams, right? Now, do you hear any of these principals talking about their drivers like that? Or any of them saying and bringing down their driver? So they can prop up the new guy that's coming in or prop up the guy that's still there. Do you hear Ferrari downgrading Carlos Sainz so they can prop up Charles because Charles is still going to be there? No. So I think Toto needs to take a look in the mirror and Toto might have to take these PR classes that all these drivers have to do because he's losing a lot. Well, I'm not going to say he's losing. He's lost, not losing. He lost a lot of goodwill from the team LH fans because how they've been treating Lewis this year. We can all see it. We can all hear the comments. We can all watch what Lewis has to say. We can see what Toto's saying. Okay. Why would you even bring these things up? I would say no comment or just keep it positive. Lewis is great. He's the greatest thing since sliced bread. Hey, I owe being a billionaire to Lewis. (laughs) Like, come on, man. You really... (laughs) hot what all right people people i oh, just i oh, got a headache on this one listen listen mercedes benz amg patronus team did not win a world championship with rossberg and michael schumacher they didn't win until lewis came aboard People try to say, oh, well, Lou, uh, Michael Schumacher did all the heavy. Come, stop it. Stop it. Stop it. When you have a good car, it doesn't just come from the engineers. A good driver helps develop the car. Remember Lewis saying, if they would have listened to me on the way this car should have gone two years ago. And you even saw it for you driver survive people who were watching. And he said, they, they didn't listen to me. And they told me to just drive and that they knew what they were doing. And I said, he was kind of hurt by it. And he said, "Mm, okay. And then they came back to him (laughs) down the line, said, you were right. You were right. A good driver helps develop the car. People stop trying to say it's all engineering. Stop trying to say it's this Stop. That's why they're doing all this stuff now at Mercedes Benz so they can get their car right for next year. That's why they're leaning on Lewis's Hamilton, his ability to develop a car, his ability and knowledge and speed and everything that he brings to the table to develop the car for next year. They're not doing it with George. They're doing it with Lewis. So stop it with all this. Oh, well, he got a fast car and that's why. Don't be a Lando Norris. Because it takes more than having the fastest car. You have to develop it, then you have to drive it, then you have to be fast, you have to be quick and qualifying, but overall, you have to be consistent. That is what separates the greats that have their name etched into trophies, that have their name etched into your mind and the great debate of who's the best of all time or the Mount Rushmore in Formula One history 
consistency. You can have the best car. Look, Lando has the best car. He's had it since Miami. Is he consistent? No, he's only won, what, he won three races? <laughs> Come on, man. Lewis, Max, those guys win 10 races in a year, 11 races in a year, 12 races in a year. Not in a couple seasons, in one year. Look, Max won, what, 20 races last year. Give me a break. If they get the best car, they're pounding it, man. They're winning week in and week out. They Max Verstappen won so much, they're calling the cool down room the Max Verstappen podcast. That's how much he won. That's the difference. So, Toto, stop it. We'll see next year when it's George and Kimmy. We'll see what happens. Okay, we'll see. Because Ferrari's going to be there. And don't think that this whole second half of the year, Red Bull hasn't been developing next year's car. They've had a huge jump. They won the first race, what, six, seven races of the year. I mean, Max won, what, seven out of the first nine or six out of the first nine races? Come on. Remember, they had one, twos with even Checo. There was one, two, one, two, one, two, right? Come on. Don't think they are not developing. They haven't been developing. and had a huge head start on everybody else. You can't put the genie back in the bottle, Toto. You've showed who you are. A lot of Mercedes fans have left. They're going to follow Lewis to Ferrari. They'll never look at Mercedes again the same way. And it's sad. It's really sad. Las Vegas. The reason why I lost a lot, like the race there, it's cold. A lot of drivers wanted it. You know, the race to be earlier, but, you know, it's a big city in you know, Las Vegas. They have to, the strip has to move. So people are moving left and right and everyone around the world's coming to Las Vegas to gamble and see entertainment. So they have the race late. It starts at 10 o'clock at night out here, 10 p.m. And it's cold. Which is great for racing because they can't predict the tire deg. Okay, not only that, they slipping and sliding all over the place and they're, you know, complaining about the grip. The grip is not, you know, no one goes to a Formula One race and goes, what a great machine that is. I mean, it never moved an inch off the line and it was in perfect condition. People want to see racing. And while you have great racing at Las Vegas, it's a great track. It's obvious. It's a great street track. There's a lot of passing because they can't figure out, oh, well, the mediums are going to go off in 10 laps and then 10 laps were coming in. So, man, those mediums are gone. Some of these guys are coming in in seven laps. Mediums usually last like 15 to 20 laps. Those, those mediums were done in seven, seven to nine laps. People were coming in. They couldn't predict it. So if they can't predict it, that means the pits, more pit stops, more pit stops means more unpredictability means there'll be mistakes. People will go into the wall. There'll be a lot of, oh, you missed that line. Somebody passed you up. That's what makes racing great. I don't want it where you can predict when to come in. I don't want it when this is going to be a one stop. I don't want it when everything's perfect because that just doesn't make for great racing it makes for boring racing that's why vegas right now is up there with silverstone and brazil in an unpredictable great waste to watch so i'm gonna give it to them they did a lot better job than they did last year in las vegas Uh, they ironed out a lot of the kinks and vegas is a must go to and must see race of the year. It it is. It's it, it it joined Silverstone. It joined Brazil as one of the races you can't miss. You can't miss it. You can't. Look at all the passing. Look at all the things that happen. And even my poor guy Franco. Oh my poor guy. You know, we have to show Franco because he has such a big fan base now in Argentina. And you know, unfortunately, Franco had a huge crash and it was a 
look at that 50 G crashes says 55 zero and he's up there now in a you know destructor championship would crash in that car and I hope that this doesn't hurt his chances into, you know, they're saying they're trying to get, you know, I say Christian's trying to sign him to Red Bull because he has a lot of sponsors and, you know, that would, a lot of Checo sponsors apparently would go with since, you know, Franco speaks Spanish and he's from Argentina and he has a big fan base. They would go with Franco from Checo. I think that would be great. I think, no. Do I think Franco would have more pace than Checo in a Red Bull? I do. I just think it's, you know, unfortunately, Checo's had his time in F1. I love, I love Checo, but I just think it's just time. Just like it went with Daniel. You know, when it goes, it goes quick, right? Like Daniel, it was great. And then now Daniel, not so great. And then Checo, he was, you know, pretty, the minister of defense. And now you're like, oh oh man, Checo, okay, buddy. You know, it was good in the beginning of the year. He had a lot of second places. You know, he didn't win a race this year, which is surprising. Should have won one of the street tracks. But it just looks like, I mean, he he finished 10th in a Red Bull. It just looks like it's time. And I think it's time. I, I'd bring, yeah, why not bring, bring Kyle Pinto into the Red Bull family. If it was me, I'd put him in RB. I'd bring my guy Yuki up into the main team, but they probably won't do that. Uh, since they won't bring Kyle Pinto, bring Franco into the main team. And they keep Lawson down there for Yuki to, to pound. And hopefully when Honda comes back with, what uh, Aston Martin, hopefully we can get a shot. You can go to Aston Martin or if Yuki doesn't get this Red Bull seat, he needs to go. I think he has a contract for next year. After that, I think he needs to go seriously, because if he's not going to be on the main team, then what's the point? What's the point in just being in the junior team? He he's Yuki's better than a lot of the drivers on the grid. He, Yuki's better. He is. So give him his chance. Give him his shot. But put him up, make him a number one on another team. Let, let's let's go. It's time. And, you know, he deserves it. He's proven it. Come on, stop it. He's proven it. He's beating everybody they put in front of him. What else is he supposed to do? Okay. (sighs) Yuki. Anyway, thank you, everybody, for joining us here at America F1. This was our Las Vegas. Vegas, baby, review show and Remember, Formula One is going. <laughs> There's no stopping, man. They're right to Qatar this week. Qatar, not one of the best tracks, not one of the best races of the year. Kind of, eh. you know, it's a mid. I don't even say it's a mid. I'd say it's a lower tier of all the races. Like, it's one of the ones that you know, it's not that much passing. It's not really exciting. Nah. It, it's a race. You know how like Russia used to be. It's like it's a race, but it's not, you know, it's, uh, it's like Bahrain. You know, it's not very... It's not one I you can't miss this one, you know, this one like if I miss it, it's Thanksgiving weekend, you know, if you miss it. Yeah, I mean, I can't miss it. But if you miss it, you can just come here and I'll tell you about it. Really, seriously, if you got something going on this weekend and you miss this race, we'll let you know everything that happened. OK, because it's 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 one of those ones that if you got other plans, yeah, you can watch it on. You might not even watch it on DVR because there's some races that are so boring. You, you go to DVR and you're just like, uh, paint drying. I think that's Qatar. Anyhow, join us next week when we'll do our review show and one of the co-hosts will be here. I don't know who it's going to be because, you know, it is Thanksgiving weekend. It'll be Paul. It'll... Yeah, you know, it'll be Scott, it'll, Mike, Mike's coming back, you know, Mike's coming back, so, uh, it'll be Mike, and, and sooner or later, because sooner or later is too late, so keep on racing, everybody. <laughs>